probably the more abundant uh, group of jasper between volcanic jasper is that of uh, rhyolitic jasper um, we remember that uh, we following the classification of jasper based of on the precursors volcanic jasper um, are the result of uh, a kind of pseudomorphose or alteration of glass of volcanic origin and the geological context uh, is um, that of uh, uh, obviously volcanic center but mostly of uh, rhyolitic uh, uh, composition and uh, mm, most of them with a caldera complex this kind of uh, volcanic uh, area have a mm, very high geothermal field because they have a very big uh, magma chamber under the caldera and a lot of heat and uh, fumarole and uh, hydrothermal solution so this is the perfect place where uh, volcanic glass are formed because rhyolite is easily uh, uh, erupted as glass and the perfect place where uh, water and uh, silica in solution can transform the, the rocks so uh, the three group of volcanic jasper we see um, the two we see before are um, formed above uh, tough one in the proximal area and another in distal area so this is more uh, cold and most no more heat and mostly subaerial and this is more cold and mostly submarine the presence of water is always important because if there is not sea there is often a lake inside the caldera so many of these jasper are formed near or under the water of the lake so uh, the rhyolitic jasper are formed basically <coughs> in subaerial condition but uh, we cannot exclude some submarine condition uh, mainly in coal condition and most of them are the result of uh, alteration of rhyolitic uh, lava body but also uh, in tough uh, there is uh, some kind of this jasper okay uh, the most uh, common relictic jasper have uh, the appearance of uh, uh, orbicular structure or spheroidal structure that uh, are spherulite and this is the result the first result of the devitrification of the glass a uh, small subgroup of uh, very important jasper is called orbicular jasper and we know just four or five of them and uh, uh, they are exactly the same as a rhyolitic jasper but more silicified so more intense uh, uh, transformation of the, of the original rock and the material are very good for lapidary purpose so um, in this case the spherulite are more complex and often banded and in many cases we, we, we can see uh, fluidal structure of the original obsidian that is the precursor of this jasper so uh, this is one proof that mm, in this case in this case we are uh, talking of alteration of obsidian uh, but uh, uh, it's possible that all the uh, rhyolitic jasper the, uh, are the result of obsidian alteration uh, a special group of uh, rock that are formed in the same way are a uh, tundrag. Tundrag are uh, nodular rock but are also formed by mm, the for, uh, the vitrification of glass by spherulite and the spherulite uh, uh, glue it together making uh, a nodule. Uh, the formation of nodule is impossible inside a lava body like an obsidian so we, we talk that we, we imagine that they are formed inside a tooth uh, probably a welded tooth or in any case some more loose than a lava okay uh, this is the more obvious aspect of a uh, rhyolite this build say rhyolite from mexico uh, we can see um, this uh, spherulite are mm, 
in some case fibrous and in some case uh, more uh, massive uh, can make uh, some ring but not too much uh, well organized and uh, the material is not mm, very good uh, silicified for this reason the term rhyolite is used as a kind of jasper that is not so good for polish and for lapidary purpose. This are another kind of this type of this rhyolite, also from Mexico, that is a big source for this kind of jasper. And this is lily pad, a very famous mm, uh, rhyolite from Oregon, that they've this uh, green background uh, color that is often found in this kind of jasper. A another um, orbicular jasper from Mexico, um, another rhyolite from Mexico, we can see that there is uh, a very strong uh, similarity between this jasper and uh, an obsidian that also uh, shows similar color. Uh, the shape of spherulite are fibrous and same size almost and mm, they have also the same color with red and uh, black dot in the middle so we can imagine this is a precursor a kind of precursor uh, in obsidian of this kind of jasper uh, this is another kind of uh, devitrification it's not uh, like spherulite but it's more dendritic uh, the starburst jasper we see that uh, the vitrification start in some point that is where some small phenocrystals or feldspar uh, is present in the glass and uh, they make a dendritic dissolution of of the obsidian but also uh, spotted in all the glass another kind of similar mm, dendritic uh, devitrification is in this jasper that have uh, another mm, famous counterpart in obsidian, the firework obsidian, that is uh, probably precursor of this kind of jasper. Uh, a very famous is jasper is the leopard skin jasper, and we found uh, a rock from Greece that is a perlite mm, that is very similar in pattern and color uh, uh, to this leopard skin jasper. Uh, the uh, spherulitic structure in this case are uh, perlitic structure that is a kind of um, quenching of the obsidian uh, that uh, stay in, uh, in contact uh, or in contact with water so the rapid uh, cooling of the obsidian is uh, cause of uh, a small uh, ring fracture and uh, the absorption absorption of water and this structure and the color that is a kind of palagonitization is very typical for perlite and all the structure are reproduced in this jasper also we can see that in this case the perlite uh, spherulitic structure uh, are al aligned along fractures so they are not uh, disseminated as, as in the previous jasper but is more concentrated in any case it's a very mm, similar group uh, of jasper because also per light perlitic structure is a kind of the vitrification okay this is another <coughs> kind of uh, uh, dendritic uh, structure also uh, inside a rhyolite it's spotted the vitrification structure so mm, we see before that our bicolor jasper is a kind of uh, of uh, rhyolitic jasper. What's the difference? Uh, the difference mm, are really few. Uh, mostly is mm, the degree of silicification and uh, the structuration of uh, spherulite and the presence of uh, uh, flow line that is typical of obsidian. And we, we analyzed mm, two of the most important uh, uh, orbicular jasper. Uh, one is the ocean jasper from Madagascar. It found, was found in 97. It's 
very tough material, very good silicification with many orbs. Some some of the orbs are of very big size, few centimeters, uh, and and uh, often the the spherulites are aligned along the flow line. This is another sample with uh, different color, but also uh, al alignment along the flow line. A few cabochon of uh, ocean jasper. We can see that the material, in some case, is uh, transparent because there are a secondary transformation in into chalcedony, demonstrating uh, the deep uh, degree of uh, silica inside. Uh, before the discovery of uh, ocean jasper, the only no uh, orbicular jasper was the poppy jasper from California. This is the Morgan Hill variety. And this in this sample also we can see the ali alignment uh, along the lava flow. Another sample with similar uh, flow variety. This is the Guadalupe uh, variety, where uh, the spherulite have uh, some kind of starboard shape, like flower, uh, where uh, we can detect uh, some quartz crystal. This other two variety of poppy jasper, in this case, uh, they are not really mm, orbicular, because uh, the spherulite are not well organized, so mm, these are uh, really a kind variety of uh, rhyolitic jasper, not, not in no orbicular. Uh, the two jasper analyzed, uh, ocean jasper and Mor morganil, uh, have in common the presence of quartz in the spherulite. So uh, this is macro crystalline quartz. Uh, this spherulite are more than one centimeter uh, in diameter. And uh, these quartz <coughs> are replaced by pseudomorphos by jasper. So mm, uh, there is a, a, a crystallization of quartz and after uh, a re replacement of jasper. So the history of this material is quite complex and very long. Uh, now <coughs> we can uh, see what happened uh, in the formation of nodules, under eggs. Uh, the debitrification uh, that uh, make growing spherulite um, provoke a dissolution of the glass and this is caused by the alkali silica reaction that is a reaction that starts from a, a small crystal of uh, feldspar because need uh, alkaline medium and uh, with water the glass the, uh, is transformed in in a kind of uh, 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 colloidal solution that after drying can uh, desiccate and make a crack so this crack is what is mm, called a thunder egg but in this case is very small uh, we we can imagine that the rock around that is uh, an obsidian because we can see the the flow line of the lava uh, is um, stopping the growing of this spherulite so um, this is what happened when a thunder egg is starting to grow inside the lava so we have to imagine that uh, for have a nodule uh, where the coalescence of many many spherulite uh, are making a, a round nodule we need to stay in an, uh, an ambient in an environment that is not so hard like lava so we imagine that is a tough the tough have the uh, same composition of, of, of the obsidian uh, a fine tough is made of glass uh, pumice is glass is the same but it's loose material so it uh, su can suffer movement of of water and uh, the, uh, the coalescence of spherulite altogether. So the spherulite, uh, we can see here, all the spherulite are sticked together, forming a big nodule. Also, in the outer surface of most uh, of the tundra, you can see 
all the spherulite stick together. This is an example from Opal Creek, uh, Oregon, and uh, this is a thunderclap, but the outer skin of thunderclap. We can see the spherulite all stick together. The bigger spherulite are near the center, where um, there is the the fracture that drain water, so they stay in co contact uh, with water, and they can grow more. Uh, the smaller spherulite are more far from the nodule. This is uh, another uh, thunder where you can distinguish easily the uh, spherulite. Uh, this is mushroom jasper from Arizona. It's a very nice material also for make beautiful cabalgon. But uh, from Mexico there is a very similar material with uh, uh, an exactly similar structure. And in this case it's not nodular but it's a blocky lava. So uh, the same structure is not... Uh, only in thunder, but also in rhyolitic jasper. So this is uh, a kind of uh, thunder egg, is the rainforest jasper, very famous jasper from Australia. So what happened in uh, in if the thunder uh, the thunder egg is starting to grow inside the lava flow? So we have a rhyolitic jasper with the spherulite with crack inside. There is many jasper of this kind. Uh, this is uh, a rhyolite from Nevada, where the filling is blue opal. Uh, another uh, famous material from Oregon, the rose eye spiderweb jasper. And uh, you can see spherulite with fracture. Th this is a kind of small thunder, but all stick it together. And the spiderweb jasper. Uh, very famous material made of uh, a rhyolite where uh, the spherulite is a very nice thunder egg shape fracture inside. So uh, we can try to uh, to explain, to reproduce uh, the step um, for the formation of uh, the rhyolitic jasper and the thunder egg. The first step uh, is the, the vitrification uh, of, of the glass uh, uh, starting with the dissolution. Dissolution uh, happens with the alkali silica reaction uh, in the wet period, so during the rainy season in the winter. Uh, we can see at the left an obsidian that can be a precursor stage of uh, uh, a jasper and uh, they show very similar structure. So the, the dissolution can be in uh, dendritic shape or in spherulitic shape. And in, in both cases, we have uh, similar uh, structure in uh, obsidians and in jaspers. So uh, the, the process continue, um, but uh, during the, the dry season, uh, the alkali silicon re reaction is stopped and the, the material produced, that is a colloidal solution, uh, dry. And when dry, make a, a, a small spherulite that is a round structure uh, that can be uh, made of uh, uh, cryptobalite, as in the case of snowflake obsidians. And this material we can see that enter in between mm, the flow line, making a small dent. Uh, and this uh, structure is the same we can see here in the rainforest jasper. And uh, uh, another kind of uh, gross spherulite is uh, in fibrous, mm, fibrous structure. And this is the case when the, uh, the lava is very alkali alkaline, and this is the crystallization of alkali feldspar. Fibrous alkali feldspar, and also in this case we can see spherulite uh, fibrous in obsidian and in jasper. So um, in this uh, moment, when the polymerization of the silica from the solution starts to make something more hard, more plastic, uh, is when the silica lose water and can make the first uh, crack, the beginning of the first crack. So this is very important step uh, because after 
we have to wait if the uh, crack is formed inside our obsidian nothing happened we make uh, a rhyolitic jasper with some mm, void inside filled with other material but and we have <coughs> example of obsidian and jasper with the same structure in tough uh, when happen the the opening on the fracture this fracture can drain more water the water can make a uh, more strong uh, alkali silica reaction that uh, produce more uh, dissolution of glass and uh, more big nodule. Uh, the, mo the nodule grow and more spherulite, spherulite stick together and uh, uh, in the next season uh, the fracture can be bigger so the process is self-feeding and this is the way as the, the thunder egg grow. But we, we will uh, see the formation of, tarek, of Tandrek in more detail in another chapter. So, mm, in this chapter, it is important to, to, to resume what we understand about the formation of the rhyolitic uh, uh, jasper. Starting from an obsidian, first we have mm, the first step of the vitrification that is the formation of spherulite uh, and uh, the formation of this kind of pattern that is a mix of primary flow banding inside the, the obsidian that we cannot see here but it's possible to see in transparency and uh, with uh, spherulitic, spherulitic strata. After that there is transformation of glass into jasper, a process that we just see in the other kind of uh, volcanic jasper and in this case we maintain the same structure and just we change the, <coughs> the, the chemistry, the mineralogy of the material. So <coughs> this, this is the passage, uh, pseudomorphic uh, passage, but the, the rhyolitic uh, jasper maintain the structure of <coughs> this intermediate step of the vitrification of the obsidian. So resuming, the rhyolitic jasper are um, uh, the result of alteration of lav lava body. Here I, I write a lava flow, but it can be a lava dome, a dike, a different kind of lava. And this is um, a lava flow made of obsidian. Most of our uh, jasper are made on obsidian because we need a very... Uh, glassy rock. Uh, the appearance is solid, not blocky, so there is not edge, there is not end of the pattern, all the lava body is uh, transformed in the same way with uh, spherulite structure. The structure is always in dots, uh, spherulite or dendritic structure, starting from a small uh, phenocrystal in found in the, in the obsidian. Um, in some case we can see a residual fluidal structure inside the uh, in between the spherulite but not always and this kind of rock cannot be nodular because we are uh, not underwater where uh, we see that it's possible to have uh, boudinage and migration of fluid from the main body to make nodule but he can make uh, another kind of nodule that is the thunder egg where uh, this uh, same devitrification appear not in a lava but in a tuff and the spherulite can stick together and uh, coalesce to, to form a nodule of uh, also very big layer. 